Welcome, welcome, one and all. I'm Mike the Digital Kid, and this is PC Tengen, my chronological examination of every game released for the PC Engine, also known as the TurboGrafx-16. Going by the Japanese release date for every Hue card, I'm going to give myself 10 minutes to play each game and tell you what I think of it. And today's game is a veritable classic for the system, and some feel it should have been the TG-16's pack-in game instead of Keith Courage. Debatably so. It's The Legendary Axe, released by Victor Entertainment in Japan on September 23rd, 1988, and debuted in the West, along with the TurboGrafx-16 itself, on August 29th, 1989. Victor Entertainment, known also as JVC uh, with their partnership with Sony in some regions, was primarily a music and film company, but like many ambitious companies in Japan's bubble era, they dipped their hands in the video game industry too. The result was one of the defining action platformers for the PC Engine, at least before Bonk came along. And I've been looking forward to revisiting this one on a personal note. It's a very simple game, the premise is as simple as anything from the era, but I like simple, what can I say? He plays the barbarian Gogan, who must rescue his beloved Princess Flair from the evil clutches of Jagu. I'm afraid we're not going to rescue Flair in the span of 10 minutes, but how close can we get to it? Well, let's hit the timer and find out. And the three, and the two, and the one, and the... GO! Alright, so Legendary Axe. This game's Castlevania. Long before Castle uh, Dracula X Rondo of Blood was released on the CD. PC Engine CD, as it were. Love this music here. So yeah, this is Gogan. I guess you could say, being a he... He's kind of like a cross between Taito's Rastan and uh, Bonk. A couple years before Bonk actually existed. Uh, I don't know if Hudson was at all influenced by the Legendary Axe when they made Bonk. I mean, that game doesn't really play much like this one. Yeah, this one is really a lot more Castlevanian in its approach. Much less a Mario game. But that thingy that I got from that spider is a charge symbol, and it allows us to, by waiting just a bit, deliver a more powerful axe strike than if we just bum rush the enemy repeatedly. You can find several more power-up emblems in the, the game, and a maxed-out strike takes, like, a, like more than five seconds to charge. But if you pull one of those off, it just crushes whatever it touches. And you do face some pretty rough enemies later. Our first boss, two bears! As if one isn't enough. I mean, have you seen Kuma and Tekken, for example? Although, these bears don't seem as tough as Kuma, so, uh, they're pretty easily dispatched. Hm. But yeah, uh, Victor Entertainment, I don't know if you've heard of them before, I remember I heard of them, uh, when I saw Akira, I believe they were behind the distribution of that film's soundtrack. Uh, aka JVC, who I know has at least published some games. Like the Super Star Wars Trilogy in the SNES, for example. But they've been merged... Oh, hey, another power-up sigil. Great. They have merged in, like, several companies somehow. They're like JVC Kenwood now, or something like that. I don't know, all, the, all, all those business acquisitions really confuse me. But, uh... Oh. I forget if this lava is instant death, and I'm not gonna find out on purpose. Well, these are Mario-like uh, fireballs rising from the ground here. So, like Castlevania, this stage has annoying bats in it. And also annoying centipede lizards? I don't know what the hell you call those. But, uh... This stage feels a lot gloomier than the first one, I gotta say. Also, if I'm not mistaken, those wings that I just picked up allow me to swing my axe faster. And swing I will! Alrighty. Mm -hmm. The boss of this stage is uh, kind of odd, though, if I do say so myself. 
but man, these things are just really killing the pace here. Come on, get chopped. Uh, oh hey, now it's Pitfall. Whoop. And fluttering butterflies. Oh yeah, it's a giant rock. Oh shoot! A giant rock that drained a lot of my life all of a sudden. Uh-oh. And the boss is actually a rock. A sentient rock, which... glows green on the edge. And I have to be careful in hitting it. Okay, I get hit one more time, I- Oh! That wasn't great. Also, it appears that I only had one life in stock there. Uh, okay, that's kind of weird. Don't you normally start out with, like, three lives in these types of games? I will say, Legendary Axe is actually pretty unforgiving. It is quite old school. It's limited in its continues, and the stages really do hit an exponential difficulty spike. Uh, I don't know when exactly, but it's noticeable. And the last scene you go through is one of those lovely uh, 2D mazes, like the end of the Revenge of Shinobi. So, uh... This game takes some practice to be good at. I still sucked at destroying the sentient boulder there. Um... <laughs> I almost died, but... I guess it's enough to pass muster for the next stage, so let's go. Also, in before your Chris Redfield punching rock jokes. And yeah, I got an extra life. But it feels so weird that I have so little lives. Also, my nose is itchy. Sorry about that. That looks like a rude gesture. Music's cool again, though. I thought that second stage theme wasn't cool, it was just gloomy. Oh, I remember these guys. These guys are jerks. Damn, rock golems rocking around the clock. Okay, that wasn't really worth it. Hmm. But yeah, I do like how this game encourages you to time your attacks rather than just rushing it at the enemy. That's pretty unique, all things considered. It is also a gimmick shared by Jalico's Astyanax, another game where you play as a warrior wielding an, a one-handed axe, if I'm not mistaken. That also had charging attack power in much of a similar fashion. Uh, I can't remember which game came first, though. I know Astyanax was in the arcades before it got a pretty different NES conversion. So, uh, for all I know, there was a programmer between Jalico and Victor who <laughs> was the same guy who just liked charging up axes for some reason. Okay, now these guys are especially annoying. They flip backward, and you don't know if they're going to toss axes high or low. A very Castlevanian enemy. Reminds me of a much more fragile version of the Axe Knights. Although their axes can be destroyed in midair, but that doesn't do any very good if they fly low. Okay, that'll do. That'll have to do. Very tricky. Very, very tricky indeed. I think this is the last one. I hope it is, because this is starting to get a little monotonous. <laughs> but yeah. As old school as this game is, I still find it pretty charming. I mean, it is far from perfect. Its difficulty does get pretty not nice in later levels. And uh, you don't get too many chances to do what you have to do, but... Oh god, it's another bear. Polar, apparently. In a jungle climate. Because why not? And he jumped into the void. Alright. Well, saves me some mess. Uh, of course, un obnoxious video game birds are requisite for action platformers such as these, and that gave me full life. Excellent. But you notice it just says Zone 3A up there. I'm afraid we got a 3B to deal with, and I don't like that river. I don't like the looks of it. It looks like something I can very easily fall into and die. Plus these uh, weird uh, axe goblin enemies. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call them goblins. Uh, 
They're now getting a little more varied in their attacks and rushing right up to me. I'm very afraid to make this jump. Okay, that'll do! Ooh, okay. Hmm. Almost a bit of a mambo here. It may be somewhat primitive, but this game has pretty decent music to it. Also, those fishmen, extremely Castlevania. What the heck? I'm, I, I, I'm sorry that I can't seem to get my mind off of Castlevania, but that is personally, like, my favorite video game series ever, so... If there's a comparison to make to it, I will make said comparison. Okay, uh, this part seems tricky. Seems like it's very easy to get knocked off the edge, but I don't. More fishmen. Okay. We're almost done with our time limit. I'm wondering if I can get to the boss at the- Oh, no! Well, I guess that's not happening. Dang it! I had a feeling that would happen at some point! Self-fulfilling prophecy! Uh, it's just... These fishmen, with all these... Okay, the stupid part was, and this happened twice in a row, I landed on the block, and then I just fell off! Like a dork. Twice! Uh... Well... This was a very horribly unceremonious way to go out, but... It's ten minutes! So, there it is. Gosh darn it, though. <laughs> that, that was a really crappy way to end that. I apologize for my lack of skill, but... I hope this was at least a decent demonstration of the Legendary Axe. One of the early action platformers for... The PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16. Bad ending aside, as, as you can see, the computer there did worse than I did, so I guess I should feel okay that I at least got as far as I did. Uh, but, thank you for watching PC Tension. I'm Mike, the Digital Kid. I will see you next time, whenever that is, for whatever game that will be. Take care and peace, everybody.